If it's in Hampton Roads, it's on the Hampton Roads Show. Welcome to the Hampton Roads Show. Our live studio audience today is from the Kiwanis Club of Norfolk. Coming up a little later, we'll find out about a big party they're throwing this week. That's a great time for a great car. And face the Fox, Tracy Page gets a little sand in his shoes as he hits the Virginia Beach Oceanfront to try sand sculpting with the professionals on today's Tracy Tries It. All right, it's also fall cleaning week here on the Hampton Roads Show, so all week long we'll show you some great ways to declutter, de-stress, and we'll show you the best tools to get that job done as we try Try to help wake everybody up on this uh, Monday morning. Happy Monday, Monday, Monday. Right now, Monday. folks have had their coffee. They're feeling a little bit awake. Have some hot chocolate. Lunch time. Yeah, no, with, no the coffee, little, with the, with the hot cute chocolate. little marshmallows yeah, you know, in it, too. Trying to change it up. You know, i got to keep it fresh. Switch it up. Well, that's, you know, you sound like my kids because as soon as it turns cold, they're like, can we have hot chocolate? Yeah, you know, the marshmallows. They've been asking for it all else. summer, and I said, that's, you have that when it's cold. Yeah. So this, this weekend, they were week like. Because it was cold. It was. Cold. Cold out on the field. Mm -hmm. You spent a lot of time on the field too, didn't you? Spent all, all day at 9 a.m. <laughs> to 6.30 yesterday in Yorktown, all yeah. baseball. And it was wonderful because our boys won the tournament. It was nice. a great feeling for the guys. Hey! There you go! <laughs> hey. They're right on it. Yeah, they're pumped up. We're pumped up. It was a great weekend. But, yeah. uh, it was all baseball. And you guys were at the Children's Festival. We were. We went out there uh, Saturday morning uh, at Town Point Park. Yep. We had the wavy tent. It was Chris, myself, and Tracy Page were out there. It was a little yeah. windy, although the sun peeked through. That helped because we were cold. But we had the little tent across the way where you had to read to kids. They had the microphone yeah. set up. And slowly but surely, I read, like, two books to the kids. And Your we reading warmed us all up. You did, did a great it? job oh. reading. Stop. Oh. Oh, God. Well, we normally would have been there, but we had our uh, the kids finally, after all the rain, could start their soccer season, so they had their first little game. Mm -hmm. uh, and but um, that was fun. It was. It was great. You're on they the sidelines. Soccer mom. I am. That's right. <laughs> soccer mom. It's really cool. Now, unlike your boys, you know, who had quite a competitive thing going on, this is still the age where they don't really keep mm -hmm. score. Although Jenny will, will tell you, she uh -oh. scored three. Three uh, goals. Three goals. Yeah, there were like probably Patrick. about twenty-seven goals scored in the entire <laughs> game. But she remembers her. Hey, three. do they still, when you guys take your kids to these events like soccer and baseball, does, is still one parent like designated to bring like all the snacks to the kids yeah. after? And yeah, oh yeah. Uh, like my kids are like way it. past snacks. <laughs> way past snacks. <laughs> they for burgers uh, after. say, Dad, it's we need to go to a buffet of some kind. <laughs> yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're big boys now. Yeah. They're playing on the big field, and uh, it's not, you know, no longer snacks. But uh, we Aww. did take home the hardware this weekend. We won that tournament, so they get they got trophies, so that's, that's cool. cool. They're probably going to look at that for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. It's just the accomplishment mm -hmm. we're so pumped up about. Now, do you, feel, do you look at your kids and, like, really hope that they will, you know, and I, obviously they do now, but I know, you know, I played soccer. I love soccer. I wanted my kids to to like soccer and I'm really thrilled that they did did you kind of have the same <laughs> feelings with your kids because you know you were an athlete like what if they didn't like to play sports at all mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah I was a little concerned about that but I, th I think early on we knew those guys wanted to play and compete yeah. and, and get out there and they've they're, they're driven to succeed and, mm -hmm. and the moments they got and you know my my oldest son yesterday at least five times said congratulations dad way to go Aww. dad Aww. I'm like, well, thanks kid but congratulations to you you guys won it they were like, so, thanks for the jeans, Dad. But it, well, <laughs> I don't know about that. At one moment in the game, I was coaching him. He looked at me like I was crazy. I said, hey, just relax. I'm just your coach. You know? Are you yeah. harder on your boys because you're no. dad? No. I'm not. I'm, no. I'm equally hard on all the kids, yeah. and I'm there to empower them. That's the way you get them to play good. they got to be empowered, and mm -hmm. they got to have fun, and they had fun. Because yeah. winning is fun. Good. And, yes. and they got some bragging rights. That's not, you know. Yeah, the 13-year-olds yeah. beat the 14-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. So we went, uh, we also got our pumpkins and gourds and all that. So we're asking folks today if kind of they felt inspired by the first cool weekend, the first fall weekend, mm -hmm. to get out and do some of those things, get right into project maybe. I knew I had to uh, take out the winter clothes, and I'm almost going to have to switch up the clothes. You know, the summer clothes are going to go away. The fall yeah. clothes are going to come in. Um, yeah, winter projects, fall projects. I are, we mean, are we in transition? Actually, oh. we were going to talk about fall projects, but also October, breast cancer awareness. Month. Yeah, that yeah. could be a project for some yeah. people to mark the color calendar to take part in one of the many events that happen in the community to support breast cancer awareness, the Run for the Cure, the mm -hmm. Race for the Cure Thank is coming Colbert. up, and the um, Pink Nights in this Pink in the City. You know, this is the event that used to be called Pink Martini Night, but Pink in the City is a fun girls' night out for some cocktails. And even the month uh, breast cancer awareness got kicked off, you could tell if you were watching some of the sports oh, over the yeah. weekend. Sports. There was um, Pink, and even Friday night, I did Friday night flights. That's how my weekend started in Chopper 10 and at the Ocean Lakes um, Salem game at the sports 
flags. The high school players also were sporting some pink too, which I thought was very cool. High school and eve. NFL, everybody's yeah. going to pink this time, this time of year, and it's really neat because it really caught on a couple years ago at every level. It's kind of neat to see a little bit of pink. There's a little high school. school. All yeah. the kids were sporting the pink. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of neat because it is uh, something that affects a lot, a lot of people. My mom uh, was diagnosed with breast cancer over a year ago, and she beat it last year. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, we were all thinking about her, thinking about the pink, and now it's the time of year. Yeah. You, do you know somebody who survived breast cancer? I mean, are you wearing pink? Yeah. The, the Admirals, pink the rink. I mean, mm -hmm. we've got a lot of things going on that is pink related. Yeah. In Kansas yeah. City, where I came, they had an area kind of like where they have an outdoor shopping area, and there's this huge fountain, and every month in October, or every October, they, the water's pink. Yeah. And it just is awesome to see how many people come together for the cause. And I work with a girlfriend. Her mom, unfortunately, was diagnosed with it and passed away. Uh, it was very rapid, but yeah. she, her daughter got involved and started to do the walks and the runs. And yeah. It's, it's a sad you know, thing, but there's a lot of hope. With, mm -hmm. with breast cancer now. You know, it took my grandmother when my father was two, two years old. So he lost his mom. She was only 36 oh, and he was two. You know, but that was a long, long time ago. But they're learning so much more about how individualized some of these cancers are and the do, new and different treatments all the time. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of hope in it, too. It's certainly not the death sentence that a yeah. diagnosis used to be. So, so for all those women out there, like my good friend Betsy, who recently got their diagnosis, who are, who are fighting it right now, there's there's... It can't hurt to be hopeful. Mm -hmm. So we're all pulling for those women in our lives, and some mm -hmm. men too. Men are not immune to breast yep. cancer either. It is either, neat so. to see the big guys, strong guys, the athletes wearing the pink to support. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. neat. Absolutely. There's some local bikers who are wearing bras this weekend. <laughs> there was a ride for the year event yeah. this weekend. Hey. They hey. looked quite comfortable. That. They pink looked fantastic. All about the cause. But all right. it is fall cleaning week. Uh, last week we wrapped up baby week, which was a lot of fun. So now this week it's fall cleaning week, mm -hmm. which is very appropriate because it came out of the cool weekend with the cool temperatures. So we're throwing the question out there uh, do you have any big fall projects like is this the time where you go clean out the gutters fix the roof get everything prepared mm -hmm. for winter for me I live in an apartment complex so it's kind of hard to do any like outside maintenance for me it's just like the interior decorating getting yeah. the pumpkin candles and mm -hmm. uh, you know changing up the fall decorations and then of course switching out summer to winter clothes don't put the Be summer the clothes thing. too far away though I know you're I new to I the just area 77 <laughs> degree I'm we walking around with a turtleneck on <laughs> <laughs> We could have 80 degrees in December. It's yeah. happened. My, so. my, my, so. biggest, my biggest <laughs> dread this time of year is when the leaves start to fall. Ah. It's just, uh, I have so many big trees in my yard that it's just constant and constant getting and cleaning them up and cleaning them up. And yep. I know a lot of people are like that. Oh my gosh, here come the leaves. It's like a plague. It's yeah. so pretty though. You put them all in a pile and jump in them. I'm pretty for you. Yeah. Why Come to my house and see how oh. pretty it is. Well, put the Help kids. me out for a while. <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, Chris, you do that. Pretty for a while, but <laughs> yeah. then when you have to clean them up every week, it's kind of a pain. But that's a fall chore that we... Yeah, that's not a one-time fall project. No. That is a kind of a season-long thing. Yeah, when, when's the best time to do it? I mean, like, I'm the guy, I'm the last guy on the street. I've got neighbors <laughs> to do it every day, and I'm the last guy. Like, there's Reckling. Get those right. guys up. I'm like, come on, man. You're messing up the neighborhood. Right, you're like, they haven't all fallen yet. I'm waiting for them all to come down, and then we'll do it yeah, all like All at that. once or every week? I mean, how's it work for you? Uh -huh. Let us know. <laughs> What's the rule when it comes to cleaning up your leaves? All right, a couple of ways you can join our conversation this morning. You can go to our Facebook page, or you can follow us on Twitter, at HR underscore show. And, you know, we saw a lot of wind. That was one thing about Friday Night Flights. A little dicey getting back from our last game because we had two lines of thunderstorms, and John Massey just kind of flew right between them. Like Superman. Yes. Zigged and zagged Felt his Felt a little bit of the wind, but, you know, I knew he had it under control. <laughs> I was a little nervous. I was, Speaking thinking, of I was thinking about you. Um, yeah, because, you know, some folks had thought that we were saying there was going to be no rain that night, and I kept saying, well, I think there's going to yeah. be some showers, and oh, yeah, yeah. sure enough. A was, lot of those games will be pretty, a work uh, to be continued. Rough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they were out there. So glad you made it back. I did. Yeah. yeah. Did you have a good weekend? Uh, yeah, I did. Yep. Um, we did some uh, in indoor cleaning. We, uh, you know, steam cleaned the carpets. Or actually, just, you know, rented the uh, mm -hmm. little rug doctor thing mm -hmm. and uh, did that. My mom's coming next weekend, so we got to oh. oh. Project, so I got to <laughs> prep the house, and I spent all true. weekend or all week now cleaning mm -hmm. and you know scrubbing with the toothbrush right on the floor. <laughs> so really, oh well, maybe not that much, but yeah, yeah clean ship, yeah. something like that, something like that. It's so um, yeah, we got some nice weather on the way. Just you know, today it's still a little bit wet, uh, still a little bit cool. A little too cool for some folks. Some folks on Facebook this morning saying, yeah, it's too much too soon. So uh, let's take a look at that 70 forecast. Here it is today, 62 for a higher average, about 75. So, yeah, we're below that. Chance for a few showers out there. We've already seen some. 
And then Tuesday, maybe a stray shower, but a little bit more sunshine. Temperatures in the upper 60s, a little bit of improvement. But look at that, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, highs low to mid-70s, lows in the 50s. That is some fall-like weather. That's that that like stuff's it. looking good. Yeah, I, I'm pretty happy about that forecast. That's good. All right, so here's the pop quiz for today. <clears throat> Here we go. Village, blank, city. You'll put those together, hopefully figure it out. End of a needle to stop and exit a car and just had a big fall event there. Just recently. Mm, to stop so. and exit a car. Yeah, a, a Monday deal. stumper. Yeah. Out the stump us this morning. A little thought in this one. So, uh, you know, hmm. put it together. Maybe do, a little do you get great satisfaction stumping us, Jeremy? Like, I, I get a little satisfaction. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm figuring that out. Mm -hmm. The stumper. <laughs> I'm just here to have fun. Tip of a needle. Right. Hey, mm. if you win, you're going to have fun. You're going to score a pair of tickets to see Aida, presented by the Virginia Opera. It's on stage now at the Harrison Opera House in Norfolk. Hey, still ahead on the Hampton Road Show, the career engineer Francina Harrison is here for fall cleaning to a week to make get that broom out and get that resume. And we're going to clean up that resume and tell you how it should be done. But first, face of Fox, Tracy Page is probably still cleaning up sand after spending the day with professional sand sculptors at the Virginia Beach Neptune Festival. Find out why coming up on this week's Tracy Tries It. Back everyone, face the fox, Tracy Page. Did you have a good weekend? I had an awesome weekend. Um, I went down to I went down to the children's festival yeah. with you. We had a good time. Lots of kids. Love those. <laughs> Took some video Little of the kids out there. Out there. Yeah. Um, you guys can um, also, you know, check on Fox3TV.com if you want to get a quick recap of our weekend at the Children's mm -hmm. Festival. Nice plug. Like yeah. It. All right. You're not going to put that in? <laughs> well, of course, <laughs> today's Monday, which means it is time for another one of Tracy Tries It. That's right. This time I went down to the beach to spend one of the few warm days we have <laughs> left, sand sculpting. Hey, Hampton Roads. I'm here for another Tracy Tries It. And guys, I know that fall, you know, just moved in. But I had to get a last day on the beach before it got too cold. And luckily, I have my man John here, and he's going to help me with some sand sculpting on Virginia Beach. All right, John, so uh, what do we got going here? It's just a basic face, a, a man's face with a, with a crown on his head. It's, people think faces are very difficult, but they're actually not. Like, I wouldn't think of this, like, just to do, carve some guy's face. Whom I've never seen, like, you see this guy's face in your head. So, like, where do you get your motivation to do different things? Now, I've been carving sand for over 25 years, so and maybe 10 events every year. So I'm running out of ideas. <laughs> so I look at current events or, you know, just uh, things that the, the local people may like. You know, I'm, I'm good with a, um, a bucket of water okay. in my little, my little bucket shaped things and that's my right. castle, boom, one tower. Right. Any kind of like, maybe like th uh, two or three quick tips that you can give somebody who wants to like maybe go beyond yeah. the sand, the regular sand castle. I suggest getting a bucket and cutting the bottom out. Okay. Sand it down so you don't scratch your hand or something and turn it over empty and then fill it with sand and water. Sometimes the, the sand sticks in the bottom, right? And it's difficult to get off because there's suctions under the bucket. This way there is no bottom. It can't get stuck in the bottom. True. And you just, it's very easy to release. And this is exactly how I made this. Is there anything that you could teach me that I could try really quickly that, I don't know, just like a, like a really quick sculpt? <laughs> Sculpture. Uh, we're going to take our mud, okay? It's All just right. sand and water. And we're going to put our hands in here and we're just going to make mud pies. Okay. Or pancakes. Go ahead. Gotcha. And we're just going to stack them up. Ah. Now this is another way to get height as opposed to using a bucket. I've been there about 10 minutes and we're already doing something if you haven't noticed. <laughs> this is like a triple stack at IHOP. All right now, watch me first. I'm going to make a roof. Just a, like an upside down ice cream cone. Okay. Cone. I want you to carve a cone right there. There you go. We got a nice roof now. Yes, we do. Now what I want you to do is, is make a slight undercut. Okay. And come under there. Okay. Not too deep, maybe a half deep? inch. No, you're okay. good. Maybe okay. a half inch. And what we're making is a quick little sand castle. Okay. What I want you to do is just do little, we call them doodads, okay. underneath and equally space them. And I'm going to teach you a really cool trick. You ready for this one? I'm ready. We're going to put a window ledge on this window. Oh, wow. By digging a hole, and it looks like an upside down keyhole. Now I'm going to take my mud, and I'm just going to push it into that keyhole. We're going to make a really cool 
windowsill. Oh wow. There's a little You gotta windows. have stairs if you have a castle. Of course. You gotta get up there. Hey, let me put this sand back here and I want you to make this ramp. We're gonna take our tool and start at the very top to cut and pull. So from four ounces. There you, you go. Pull it, cut, cut and push. Pull, good. Cut. And good. Pull. Good. And I mean, that was just a real simple little sandcastle. I mean, yeah. you can continue on with that technique and do a really cool sandcastle. So, I'm officially a sand sculptor. Thanks to my man John here. You guys, he's one of the master sand, sand sculpting uh, builders. You can check out his work right here on the Virginia Beach Oceanfront through October the 9th. All right, guys? So, until next time, Hampton Roads, I'm Tracy and I tried it. <laughs> <laughs> Ta da! So, like next time or next summer when you're going to the beach and people are like, hey, let's build sand castles, you're gonna be like, and yeah, I gotta build, pull like, that video back up. Like, I would be the stairs. person, like, the, the last day of summer and learn how to build a sand castle. <laughs> it's like 50 degrees outside and I'm trying to be out there in a sweater, but still on the beach. Yeah. Know? It's fun. It was um, neat. Yeah. I like the stairs, how he showed you how to make the stairs. That was cool. I was like, at first I was like, what? Are, I didn't really know what was gonna. What was going to happen, you know, I saw it starting to fall, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm actually doing something. <laughs> so that was cool. Put your initials in it? Uh, no. Oh, I should have okay. put my initials in oh. it, or my, oh. like, a little script. But, uh, but yeah, the, <laughs> I went um, in the tent, actually, where the, uh, all the other sculptors were. John was one of the master sculptors um, that was at the Neptune Festival this past weekend, and mm -hmm. the things in there were crazy, just, yeah. just pyramid faces. One guy had a like a baby inside of the inside of a stomach and mm -hmm. yeah like that's, that's how you look you're like what is this like you're just looking at it like how how did you do this just mm -hmm. out of sand it's it's crazy nice but well, it was really cool of course folks can check them out yeah um even though the contest is over if you like to see the sand sculptures of the north american sand sculpting championship they are on display from now until October the 4th um, on 8th Street on the Dream Beach Oceanfront. Admission is $3. Kids 12 and under are free. Nice job, Tracy. Thank you. High five. Hey! hey. All right. In the buzz. <laughs> I'm going to have to go see that uh, guy with the baby in his stomach. It was a guy with a baby uh, in the womb? There are issues on many. We'll talk biology with Tracy later about where the baby He should, he should try that. Where the Tracy, baby give goes, that a try. You know? So, all right. Another sand, conversation sand for another time. sculpting, <laughs> uh, children's festivals. It is art, you know, so uh, anything goes. All right, we are uh, asking you to buzz in on our hot topics this morning. We've got some hey. by There he is. There's he Tracy. wanted to try that. He's been trying, <laughs> dying to try that. Tracy tried it. Yeah. Walking through our shot. I hope it was everything you dreamed it would be. All right. <laughs> you guys are commenting on our hot topics this morning on our Facebook fan page. Uh, we were talking about how this weekend saw not only like the beginning of fall with the weather, but it is officially now October Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Sue That's says right. she changed her profile picture to a pink Care Bear. It's very cute. You should see That's that. That's cool. Uh, she purchased some pink attire to support the breast cancer call. And she says she's going in for a mammogram today. Nice. So I hope that, nice. that all goes very smart. fine. Yeah, it's not that bad. Uh, okay, Jennifer says um, she painted on two of her ring fingers, uh, pink paint, um, one for her aunt who is no longer with us. She said it's been 12 years this October since her passing. And she said the other little pink uh, on her finger is for Connie, who she said is fighting, she said is fighting this stupid disease right now. I feel you on that. And then she said her hairstylist will also be adding uh, some pink to her hair for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So that would be very a fun, stylish way to support the cause. Nicely done, Jennifer. We're also talking about what happened this weekend. And me being a sports guy, i got to yep. tell you, Norfolk State beat South Carolina State. They're in first place in the MEAC. Old yep. Dominion got its first CAA victory. Uh, yeah, Over UMass. Uh, ooh. And... Uh, and how about this? Uh, we got uh, all kinds of sports things. The Redskins won. The Cowboys yeah. lost. And uh, yeah. And how about yeah, yeah, yeah? We hear the Saints win as well. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, Jen says, "Good morning, y'all. It's a vacation and birthday weekend. And uh, oh. what she's doing is she's going to the mountains of West Virginia." She says she DVRs the show every week, so. That's hey, good. Thanks, Jen. I'm glad that she saves it, you know, and I mean, if other folks can't watch us at 11, the whole thing goes online later in the day, so right. you can always catch up old catch up on old episodes, too, at uh, thehamptonroadshow.com. What else are we buzzing about We're today? We're talking about your fall projects. Mike says he's going through the stuff in the storage room and getting rid of it. He said it's been sitting back there for a few years, not being used. Good for you if you can just fall finally bring yourself up. to just say, you know what, I'm never going to use this and just throw it away. 
throw it away. Give it to Goodwill. Uh, Katie says Recycle. she's organizing the garage. Uh, they just moved in July. She says it's a disaster out there. So good luck with that project, Katie. And welcome to town. Thanks for watching. Well, the Katie, I'm here show. to tell you that that garage will always be a disaster. It's always the last place to get cleaned up. Yeah, that's true. Especially yeah. in my house. We clean it. Next day, it's disaster. Yeah. Over and over. It's a never-ending battle. Click the button. Click and down comes the door, and yeah, you don't have to think about it anymore. Close the door, and you'll be yeah. fine. All right, keep your comments coming at the Hampton Road Show, our Facebook fan page, and also at our Twitter page at HR underscore show. All right, fall cleaning we continue is up next on the Hampton Road Show. We're going to find out how you can clean out your closet to create something very fun for fall and get rid of some of the stuff you're not using, all for a great cause. Uh, but first, even though it's Monday, you may have your sights set on getting the weekend started early, like the folks from the Norfolk Kiwanis Club in just a moment. We'll get the scoop on their annual Kiwanis Harbor Party happening this Thursday evening. And don't forget about our pop quiz today. You could win a pair of tickets to see a AIDA presented by the Virginia Opera on stage now at the Harrison Opera House in Norfolk. Log on to the HamptonRoadShow.com. Click the pop quiz button at the top right hand corner of your screen. Good luck. Welcome back to the Hampton Road Show. Even though it's only Monday, you can get your weekend started early this week at the 19th Annual Kiwanis Harbor Party. Joining us now for more on that is Kiwanis member Joel Rubin. <laughs> Joel, welcome Great. back to Wavy. Great to be back in the in the building. Great to be back with you. Yeah. Lovely seeing you host co-hosting the show. Well, this thanks, is Joel. great. I'm, I think it's a great thing too as well. well. My family does. They're all uh. for it. <laughs> uh, let me just say this. Uh, a Thursday night bash at Town Point, uh, yes. that's pretty cool. Well, Thursday night is a great night, mm -hmm. and the best place to be in Hampton Roads is on the Elizabeth River at Town Point Park. It is gorgeous. Every year we do this early in October. The weather's perfect, and I saw the forecast that Jeremy did. 72 degrees, sunny on Thursday at 4.30 when the Harper Party starts, and it's just going to be a, w a wonderful night. So why wait till Friday when you can get it underway on Thursday? I like that. Absolutely. And if you like seafood, there is no better place to come and get it because it's all you can eat, and uh, I know there's some delicious stuff out there. The politicians are out there. You see Scott Ridgell and, and all those guys, and a lot of, you bring your coworkers, your friends, et cetera, bring them on out there. The seafood's great. Scallops, crab cakes, oysters, clams, fish, the best clam chowder in America. We call it the Harbor Party Clam Chowder. Virginia Seafood Council members come in and make it. Beer, wine, it's all for one price, $40 in advance for your tickets. Just go to harborparty.org and get them, and it's just a, a lot of fun. And as a, the sun goes down, it just gets even nicer out yeah. there, and people don't want to leave at 7.30. It's just a great night to be out and there. And you can't do this without some really good sponsors, and one being Old Point National Bank. is uh, You've got to have somebody like oh, that. And this is Laura Calvert, who's here from the, uh, one of the vice presidents. And we've got a bunch of other folks here from, from Old Point. This guy here, Ed Munson's son, who used to be the general Ed. manager here at Wavy TV, nice. right? This is his, his son for Ed. Who, who, who works for, for Old Point, and they've been a terrific sponsor for us. Uh, for the Harbor Party, and this this event raises money for children's charities across Hampton Roads, and we've raised over seven hundred thousand dollars in the past eighteen years for children's charities, and that's what make us makes us all feel real good. And talk more about that and why that's important, because I mean we want to raise and do give back uh, to the community, and there it is. Well, especially now because it's tight out there, and the charities have all sorts of challenges. So when they know that we've got an event like this, they come out and support it, encourage their other volunteers and board members to come out. But we've been helping Children's Hospital and Edmark and Hope House and so many other charities over the years. And it, 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 all the proceeds go. We try to keep our costs as low as possible. The ticket prices, the sponsorships from companies like uh, Old Point and a lot of others in the region that come out and help support this event. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful You've event. You've been doing this for a very long time. I can tell this is a very well-attended event. We, I, I, I love this event. Um, our company gets involved in it. Um, we help bring out the political figures as a lot of them come out. We're going to have some of the candidates for the Senate next year, the congressional candidates next year, state Senate, House of Delegates, and some others come out, the elected officials. It's one of the reasons the Kiwanis Club of Norfolk puts it on is to allow people to have the opportunity to meet their elected officials and the candidates up close and, and personal. 
from 4.30 to 7.30 on Thursday night. That sounds great. And, you know, I'd love to sit here and talk about UVA beating Idaho. Yes, but, uh, point. Yeah, I know. Sorry about your Hokies. Big though. UVA guy, yeah, and the Hokies <laughs> lose, but that's okay. But we're here to talk about the, the, the Kiwanis Harbor Party Thursday, October 6th, 4.30 to 7.30, Town Point Park in Norfolk. Uh, it sounds like a great time. Go to harborparty.org. Joel Rubin. You guys, thanks for joining us today, and uh, have a great Thursday. Thank you. All right, still to come on the Hampton Roadshow, executive producer Stephanie Cook is pulling double duty up next. She's going to join us with her review of the new film, 50-50. All right, don't forget to log on to thehamptonroadshow.com. Click on the Save Now Hampton Roads Deal of the Week. Every week we're offering incredible bargains on things you love. This week's deal is from Kokomo Glow Tanning Boutique in Williamsburg. You can get 50% off unlimited tanning for a month. Check it out. Sign up for more Save Now Hampton Roads deals right now at thehamptonroadshow.com. Turning to the Entertainment Express, an aquatic mammal dethroned the king of the jungle this weekend at the box office. So what does that mean? You know, you're gonna try? Well, <coughs> Dolphin Tail earned a little more than 14 million dollars to take the top spot. The family film with Harry Connick Jr. and Morgan Freeman debuted at number three last weekend. In its second week, Moneyball came in second place for the weekend. The baseball drama starring Brad Pitt took in 12 and a half million dollars. And after two weeks at the top, The Lion King came in third, earning slightly more than 11 million dollars. Mm -hmm. It was an unusual weekend in which three carryover movies outperformed each of the new releases. And now we're going to check in on the box office review this weekend. Film critic Stephanie Cook went to see 5050. What did you think? Well, you're going to have to wait for the cookies. Mm. But I can tell you this. If you are a guy who is 27, not <laughs> married, working for NPR radio, and you get a potentially life-ending spinal cancer, you have got to have a guy like Seth Rogen for a best friend and then write a movie about the whole experience. <laughs> and also have Seth Rogen play your best friend in the movie because that's what <laughs> happened with 5050. Adam is the good guy when the doctor, coldly and with no eye contact, clinically explains his diagnosis. Adam reacts in disbelief, saying, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I recycle. How does this happen to me? <laughs> he doesn't quite know what to do with the information. And with the help of his best friend, Kyle, cancer does become a little more real. I'm going to throw up. Don't throw up. You're going to be I fine. I actually think I'm going to throw no, up. No, you're not going to throw up. Gonna Just throw up. No, open your eyes. Look at me, look at me, look at me. All right? What kind of cancer it's is it? Can What's the name of the cancer? Some rare what? kind of cancer. What, 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 what's it called? Schwannoma. I knew this. Schwannoma? Schwannoma. It's schwannoma? What's schwannoma? That means tumor, basically. Your I think chances. So. What are your odds? I don't know. I mean, I looked it up and it said 50 50, but that's like the internet, so. It's not that bad. That's better than I thought. You'll be fine, man. You're young. Young people beat cancer all the time. Every celebrity beats cancer. My Aunt Armstrong, he keeps getting it. Yeah. He's fine. Yeah. Got from Dexter? Right. He's okay. You're gonna be fine. Yeah. You're gonna be fine. 50-50. If you were a casino game, you'd have the best odds. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. That's good to hear. You don't want coffee? I'm awake now. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kyle has his buddies back, of course, calling out his girlfriend, Rachel, played by Bryce Dallas Howard, who is soon out of the picture. And then Kyle also helps him pick up chicks. Then smoking medicinal marijuana comes into play and driving him to his cancer surgery. On the surface, Kyle seems self-centered, but amazingly for Rogan, he also has a deeper undercurrent to his acting here by the end of the film. Angelica Houston plays Adam's mother, who announces she's moving in as soon as she hears and processes the news. But Helen is also taking care of Adam's father, who has Alzheimer's. A few very real and poignant moments come with Richard's cluelessness and sudden clarity that Adam is his son. The acting from both here are top notch. Anna Kendrick is the almost a therapist named Katie. <laughs> Adam is her third patient ever, and she does her best to invoke his feelings and give him room to move through the stages of dealing with the diagnosis. She plays this just right, believably out of her element and unable to maintain professional distance from him. 50-50 is not for everybody. Some really raunchy language and situations it is are, but it should be for a lot of people. This movie refuses to treat can a cancer diagnosis with kid gloves, choosing instead to develop the characters through realistic humor in the face of one of life's toughest curveballs. Even though director Jonathan Levine has chosen some stere stereotypical movie ploys and surrounds Adam with some stereotypical characters, the movie does work on many levels. It's only made better by the spot-on performance of Joseph Gordon-Levitt as Adam. He brings a 
thoughtful sincerity to the role and is probably one of the best emerging actors out there right now. Even though you might not think you want to see a cancer movie, you should. It's life affirming and odds are way better than 50-50 that you're going to like it. Nice. I wonder, I thought it, would, it looks good from the trailer I mm -hmm. saw. Last week, uh, what was the movie? Moneyball, you reviewed. You gave yes. that five cookies. Five. That's like very unusual. You ready? So how many cookies are you I'm going to give this four. It had <gasps> some downfalls, but it's still really worth seeing. Ah, really worth seeing. Four cookies. Okay. 50-50. Mm -hmm. So check it out if you haven't seen it. Yep. All right. Nice job. Thank you. All right, well, here's a look at what's on tap on Wavy TV tonight. Tonight at 8, the competition gets fierce on NBC's The Sing-Off. The six remaining groups from the first bracket of performances provide a double dose of acapella as they each take on a new hit as well as memorable 60s tunes. Then at 10, Maureen Cozy's up to the mob and Nick steps up his campaign and Carolyn breaks in a new bunny in an all-new episode of The Playboy Club. And, of course, stay with us for all of your news and Super Doppler 10 forecasts on Wavy News 10 at 11. Well, career engineer Francina Harrison isn't afraid of dishing out some tough love. And coming up in just a moment, she'll do just that as she shares her tips on how to clean up that resume. But first, the folks from Tidewater Parent are here to tell us about a great way to turn those old clothes into your closet into a fun fall decoration for a great cause. Cleaning out your closet, closet is one of the projects that we talked about. How about repurposing a few of those old items to create something fun for fall? Joining me now with the details, Tammy Lindquist, the marketing manager from Tidewater Parent Magazine, with an event that's coming up that will make good use of those old clothes and and uh, support you know one of the best causes in the area. So thanks for coming back. Thanks for having me. So this is coming up the Build a Scarecrow event for yes, and you can go online and register, or you can. Go to any McDonald's nursery and register, and it's $25. You can take a scarecrow home with you. They provide all the materials, mm -hmm. and in the meantime, you can start cleaning out your closet, your attic, anything you can't fit in or it's just you don't want anymore. Yeah. Take it to one of the thrift stores because they're using the clothing from that to have the scarecrow fund. Okay. And last year, McDonald's donated over $18,000. All wow. the proceeds from this event go directly to CHKD. All right, and this is the time of year where folks are looking to decorate a little bit for outside. Probably want to put a scarecrow out there. Anyway, you brought a great <laughs> cowboy a great Dan example, cowboy Dan, and you said these are these are pretty easy to make. But if you want to oh, bring yeah. little ones, will there be folks on hand? Will who will come? Yes, help all the them? volunteers will be there from CHKD Circles. Um, they'll have folks from McDonald's helping mm -hmm. out, and that's just a great cause. And and we are the media partner for McDonald's yeah. and CHKD, so we're proud to support this event. Is this going to be happening at um, both locations? All or locations. All yeah, four them. locations. Okay, great. October 8th and 9th, and if you need to um, find out anything, you can go online and register, stop by McDonald's, or call Sherry at McDonald's at extension 336. Okay, and if you can't make it out to the event but still want to do something to support it, as Tammy was saying, if you've got old clothes that you can contribute, you know, they're not doing anyone any good in the back of the closet right. or in that box or that bag. So get it out, get it to the thrift stores uh, so that they're available. There's for this so many of project. them out there, and gently used clothing is the yeah. way to go now. Okay. Anything else that you want to tell folks about this fall that's going on? That's the right. Um, we are going to be, we are the media sponsor for Kids for the Cure. So we're going to be down there to support breast cancer because it is a family disease. Mm -hmm. October the 15th, and we're also launching our cover kids. Very, very popular. The first one will be at Edinburgh Commons mm -hmm. on October the 29th. Okay, tell me about Cover Kids. Well, you can come to one of our events. We're going to have one at the Green Turtle, Edinburgh Commons. We'll also be at um, the last one is at McDonald's on December the 2nd. Okay. And you can enter to win um, a chance to be on one of our covers on one of our websites or on any auxiliary products. It's cool. really a cool event. All Just right, we, bring your photo. We ended up running down a few things, but not to worry because if you want details about the Build a Scarecrow project or the other projects coming up throughout this month and, and uh, down through the winter, you can find it all if you would pick up a copy of your Tidewater Parent magazine. All right, here are the details now of the CHKD fundraiser. It's October 8th from 9 to 4 and October 9th from 10 to 4 at all four McDonald Garden Centers in Hampton Roads, or you can visit www.kingsdaughters.com dot org forward slash scarecrow for more information about how you and the family can get out there and build a scarecrow. For more on that, 
For more on make, being a cover kid and, before, and more on Kids for the Cure, you can check out Tidewater Parent Magazine. It is the premier parenting publication in Hampton Roads. For more parenting tips and great articles, make sure you pick up your free copy of Tidewater Parent. It is available throughout Hampton Roads. And also connect online, find those great deals, read the great local blogs, interact with other local parents about the issues that concern you most by going online to mytidewatermoms.com. And we'll link that website to ours. Thanks for all the information about this. It's going to give you. people some good ideas. You don't need to bring anything. Just get out there and have fun. That's right. All right, guys. Welcome back in the Bus Center talking about what you're talking about, our hot topics this morning. I want to thank everyone, of course, for weighing in. On Facebook, I want to start just asking folks, uh, of course, October, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Do you know someone who has gone through uh, breast cancer? Do you know a survivor? Do you have a story to tell? Or just how do you plan to support the cause? Uh, let's see. Stephanie Curdy on Facebook says, my grandmother, before she passed away last October, she went through and she survived breast cancer. She says she bought an awesome shirt from the Neptune Festival. The front of it says WTF. Now, before your mind goes there, she says the back says winning the fight. So WTF stands for winning the fight. It's from the Woohoo Sisters, and she says she thinks she's going to get some uh, pink hair wraps done. And then, of course, you know, this weekend it was fairly chilly out there, kind of the beginning of fall, asking uh, what are your big fall projects, because all this week on the Hampton Road Show it's fall cleaning week. Emily Brooks says she's going to Disney in five weeks, so she's busting her butt making some green. I don't blame you. And then, of course, uh, on Monday, we usually always ask folks, uh, what did you do this weekend? Did you catch up on some football? Did you have some fun? Do outdoor activities? Richard Clayton says, I think I'm saying this right, Pet Oberfest, kind of like Oktoberfest. He says it's at the Pet Castle. He's been putting it together for a few weeks. All the net proceeds will benefit the local animal rescues. Uh, Stephanie Curdy says she went to the Neptune Festival and football. Go Saints. Corin, Corinne Maple says, ugh, it's Monday already, I know. <laughs> Emily says she did daycare all weekend. Katie Foley Pratt on Facebook says, our weekend was lovely. She spent it as a family at home celebrating her husband's 30th birthday. And then Jeannie says, uh, me and my best friend went to the mall. And, of course, you know, we're on Facebook. We are also on Twitter at HR underscore show. We have a tweet here uh, from the cook crook. She says two things, yard work and baking. She's trying out some homemade bread. Yummy. So, guys, thanks for sending us your comments on Facebook and following us on Twitter. Uh, we'll keep reading them throughout the show. Thanks. And speaking of bread, how can we make a little bit more of it? Since it's fall cleaning week, one very important place you can do a little cleaning is your resume. Career engineer Francina Harrison is here with a little look of what you need to do to tidy that resume up. And Francina, when uh, mm -hmm. you think about resumes, uh, people who employ people want to see something nice and neat and they don't want a lot of garbage. They want it sure clean. Don't. What is like the biggest thing, that, mistake that people make? Putting a lot of garbage on their resume. Putting a lot of garbage. Yeah. They Keeping don't want to real. sift through it. That's it. And, and here's the thing, and I've seen, you know, right now, September, October, you know, these are the transition months. So we're in the month of transition right before the holidays. So folks want to get right. a job before Christmas, right? But, you know, the ain't, folks who are anxious are putting a lot of stuff on that document that doesn't need to be there. So I have some tough love. Okay, so I look at real the document, and there I see it. There they are. There's yes. so much on it. What mm. is one thing that really aggravates you? Bullets. 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 Bullets shoot people, right? Yes, bullets they will do. kill your breath. Overuse, overplayed of bullets. Bullets are used, folks, only to emphasize a point. If every sentence on your resume has a bullet, you're killing it. You're killing it with you're bullets. Killing it. Stop we shooting don't your resume killing. with bullets. Yeah, so All please, right. just to emphasize a point, not everywhere. Of course, everybody has a story to tell. Everybody's done a lot of this, that, and the other, but some of it is just unnecessary. Isn't unnecessary. It? I don't want to know everything you did from birth till this morning. I don't. Okay. I don't. Well, As an you employer, sure about that, Francina? Well, not for the resume. Maybe, you know, on okay. Facebook, but not for the resume. But we are interested in your performance, your accomplishments, your leadership, how you, you know, help the customers come back, how you keep, you know, customers satisfied. That's what we want to know. That's what we want to know. So with 30 seconds or less is all you have for this resume tool, please just tell us performance, accomplishments, and leadership. We call that PALS, P-A-L, easy to remember. You want to capture them right from the very beginning from and don't confuse one. them because right. employers will sift right through it and they'll go, nope. Mm -hmm. Now we're guilty of overshare, too much information. That's what really kills okay. a lot of folks from getting to the interview table. Um, formats. 
formats can be fatal. Yeah, how important <laughs> is it to find the right one, and is there, a, is there a right one? There is. There's always a right one for a person, but, you know, the cookie-cutter approach does not apply to resume writing. So you need to, you know, if you have strong work history, the chronological may work with performance. If you've got a couple of gaps, the chronological will destroy you. You'll right. never get an interview if you showcase all the gaps. So you have to make sure, you know, I know everybody's reading all those little resume books. You have to find the right format that really maximizes what you have and minimizes what you don't. All right. Let's clean up that resume. <laughs> One last tip for people out there, how to keep it clean. Oh, gosh. You know, 30-second rule, um, you know, share your performance, accomplishments, and leadership. And, you know, just make sure you're selling who you are and what you bring. Selling what you are. Hey, you know, in this business, one of the most difficult things I've found is editing. Mm. What to put in, what to leave out. It takes a long time to figure that out. And I, can, I guess it's the same thing with a resume, isn't it? It is. You know, and I'll probably borrow from your industry and even our, our sales folks. You know, think about sound bites. I mean, if let, me, let me sort it out. You go back to your thing. Let me I monitored, I trained, I compiled. You know, you have to use a verb. You have to hit the action because action equates to performance. All this responsible, hardworking, defending, da, 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 is there an orchestra? Mm -hmm. It tells us nothing. So stop using those played out, overused words, and it, performance. And like you said, employers know right away. They yeah. see that resume and they know which, which is right, which is wrong. Mm -hmm. They throw out the ones that are bad. So yeah. overdoing it is too much. It's over too, too much, too much. Clean so up that resume. Clean up. And if you need help, you know, get a coach. You know, visit us at TCE now. We have lots of things up there to help make those uh, resumes wow versus won't. A lot of them are wanting, won't. Yeah, I know. Won't. The marketplace is so competitive is. right now. It's important to get that right. It is. Okay. It is. And, then, and if you want to know more about cleaning up that resume, you can learn more. Go to tcenow.com. Mm -hmm. Francina Harrison, thanks for cleaning up the resume. And I hope no I don't problem. have to put one together anytime soon. No, you're fine. You're here a long time. <laughs> I like long that, Francina. Time. You're awesome. There yeah. it is. Uh, clean up that resume. Get to it. And if you have any questions, contact Francina. <laughs> Good okay. tips. I'm still stuck on no bullet points. <laughs> <laughs> Someone likes the bullets. Do so you put like a little happy face? Next I put to flowers each one and or bullet points. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really. Well, it's different for scrapbooks than it is for resumes. So you know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that was a jab or. A no, 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 no. It was. You just, I know it was you like scrapbooks. So. Oh no. Way to go, yeah. Jeremy. Why well, know the pop quiz answer? How about that? Oh yeah. <laughs> Who'd you get from today? I was just wondering. Was that was another <laughs> jab. That was just another jab. That, that was an actual jab. That was. Uh, actually, I came up with it on my own. It took me Did some you? time. Really? Yeah. But I, okay. I came right. together. Very good. Well, maybe you got the right answer. Let's find out what the clues are, and then we'll take a look at the uh, answer there in a moment. So, uh, village, blank city, end of a needle to stop and exit a car, and just had a big fall event there. Yeah. Which was the children's festival, which I was at. So it is Town Point. Park. Yeah, see, the, if I forgot that you were down there at that, so Town Point Park. Yeah, that you probably had the. Uh, the see, advantage why, why on that couldn't one. I just have the answer? Well, why you is it could I was have. There and I had, just you know, in, your, in in recent memory, you've had a couple <laughs> people kind of hint you or tell you the He's answer. I'm glad you hinted me it's because fun. I had no idea what it was. You had me stumped, <laughs> yeah. and I was there this weekend. Yeah, so. oh, <laughs> I got it eventually, but I was on the wrong end of the needle at first. <laughs> I was like, I, and then I just, just like, I the tiger, oh. and then I just stay there for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> and then I finally was like, point the point yeah. mark. Yeah. Yeah. Point here. Yeah. mark. Mm. All right. Well, yeah, good job. Thank I'll give it to you. Thank you. Fair and square. Good job. Thank you, Jeremy. All right, so our winner's getting a couple of uh, tickets to say Aida, mm -hmm. to, see I to see Aida uh, at the Harrison Opera House. So we will let you know who you are. And we thank you for playing. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's a great Online. time. Yep. And you can see past winners, what they've won, the prizes that we've given away. Mm -hmm. If you ever miss the answer, the answer is always posted on there later today mm -hmm. as well. Sounds good. Yep. All right. Well. That We're going to take a little break. That. Yeah. We'll take a little break. We'll be back with more of the Hampton Retro Stay with us. <laughs> 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 some we were just handed cards. something. Yeah. <laughs> so you something. know you go and find the greeting cards. Of course, they have the kind that you can open and it plays songs yeah. and mm -hmm. it's to whatever thing you have. These are um, from American Greetings uh, and they're pull-out cards. Let me out. So what do you, what, this is a... What you got? Go ahead, pull it you out, see what happens. <laughs> can you guys hear that? <laughs> he says, happy, happy, sunshiny day to you. So I was like, how do you, where's the card? And then look at this. It opens up. Happy birthday. 
Isn't that awesome? That's wicked, yeah. Like, well, but I, I can't write my whole saying in here. It's yeah. not enough room. I know, but if you're one of those right people who can never think of anything to write in there, yes. like this is totally card for you because the actual... <laughs> Don't touch my birthday nut. And nice. then you just have a little bit of room to put the caption inside. You don't have to think of something flowery. All right, all right. This one you right. get. I, I got kittens. Kittens. I got all about the cat. It comes from, there you go. It sounds like chipmunks. <laughs> sounds like they just took the wheeler. <clears throat> I got the monkey. I don't know who handed me this thing. I. I I, that doesn't sound too good. They recorded that in the Weather Center. Sounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he, he, he sounds like he's not too happy. I don't know. That's what Jeremy says can't. every time they give like the entire season's hurricane forecast. And starts like going, <laughs> going, going there like there's no we way. That's about right. Can start a little band with this. It could be like. It could be like. Yeah. Shit, my rock. But you got to have a rhythm to it. You can't just randomly pull it out. You got to just. Like. <laughs> I'm trying to get a rhythm going here. Yeah. So it's that. in rock, yeah. DJ Wheeler. All right, so if you have an October birthday to remember, I don't know, maybe yeah. something or something. I don't know, well, I know who, who would get this, but hey, it's cute. All right, look at that. Oh. Who's got the Tidewater Parent Magazine? They were talking about their cover <gasps> kids' care. Oh, it's right uh, there. There we go. Look at that. So we actually know this little guy. Yeah. He is the son of one of our producers of uh, Wavy News 10, Stephanie Duke Cook. Yeah. That's her little boy. He's got a little Halloween awesome. costume. costume awesome in his pirate costume. Arr. So if you think you've got a little cover kit at home, the details of how they can possibly grace the next cover of Tidewater Parent appear prominently on their website are uh, inside the latest edition. <laughs> that is cool. Put the little kiddos on there. Would you put Jenny or Sam? Would well, they they'd be like posed together? You would know, they sit still? one of them would pose <laughs> all day long. Jenny, <laughs> I don't know about the sitting still. Yeah, maybe, maybe yeah. they take pretty good. A couple pictures. of monkeys. Around. Yeah, yep. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, sorry. I I, I still have that going there, mm -hmm. but uh. Um, they hand them to us. I mean, you know, hey, uh, when you hand these things, I mean, we're just going to run can we, with Can we keep them? Oh. Like, can I actually know Does that do anything when you open it up? Does it say, here's yeah. your card? It says, Jeremy Wheeler. Well, that'd be pretty neat. Hey? Well, that'd only be good for one person. All right. We're, we're rambling. Uh, too much fun with the cards, we're guys. Rambling. Let's thank some people. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thanks to our studio audience. Don't forget about the party at the park. It's coming Water up on Thursday Olympic. night. Thursday so Seafood smart. Festival. Everybody's weekends are booked, so get in there on Thursday and have a good time supporting another great cause. And don't forget, if you can build a scarecrow this weekend to support THKD. Thank you, career engineer Francina Harris, and clean up that resume. And, of course, I want to thank Tracy for Tracy Tries and also walking in front of the camera today. He's awesome. Awesome job, Tracy. Good job there, Tracy. Can you do it again? Do it again. Can you do it again? Just come on. Just do it. Do it walk, again. walk. Oh, oh there it is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have, have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. Have a great day. <laughs>